the grace of Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the companionship of the Holy Spirit be with you this day and always. Welcome to worship on Trinity on Main, the United Church in the heart of Newmarket. I welcome you here today, and I have a few announcements for you. Tuesday afternoon, you're invited to come here to the church, well, to our front lawn, for a time of music and prayer and fellowship. Um, if you have a lawn chair, bring it along. We will have some chairs available, and we really look forward to um, getting together and sharing some time together, reconnecting in many ways. During worship today, we will see a baptism, the baptism of Stanley Michael, the grandson of Janice and Michael Morat. It um, was recorded on June the 6th, and I give thanks to the Reverend Ross Carson for presiding at this um, baptism in my absence. Within the United Church of Canada, baptism is a public event, and during COVID, we have recorded different baptisms that are done within the COVID restrictions, and then show the baptisms in worship so the Congregation of Trinity can witness and celebrate this holy event. On the 26th of June at Stanley's baptism, Alan and Beverly Hoyle participated and represented Trinity's community at this event. We give thanks for everyone on that and celebrate with them. And this week, Heather Hobbs welcomed a grandson to her family, Jacob, Jacob Rhett Cully, born on July 24th, son of Katie and Adam. And may God bless this family as they have this time of celebration together.
As we gather today, we gather with grateful hearts and we acknowledge the history, spirituality and culture and stewardship of the land of the Indigenous people of this region. We are in the traditional ter territories of the Wendat, the Haudenosaunee and the Anishinaabe peoples, whose presence here continues this day. We would like to acknowledge that this land in which we are located is the meeting place of two treaties, the lands of the Mississaugas of the Credit and those of First Nations of the Williams Treaty. We would also like to acknowledge the Chippewas of Georgina Island First Nations as our closest Indigenous community, community and their congregation there, Georgina Island Native United Church, as a partner in faith. We would like to thank them and other Indigenous people for sharing this land with us. And we seek to live with respect, peace, and right relations as we work and worship and play on this traditional territory. Hear these words of Jesus. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another, just as I have loved you. You also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. We come to worship needing love in our lives, love of family, love of friends and strangers and enemies, love in the community. In this time of worship, let us open our hearts to God and to one another. And may we discover the love of God that surpasses all understanding. Let us pray. Lord God, to whom we owe everything, we ask that we be worthy of whatever you have called us to do, that we be humble and gentle with one another, patient and loving, striving to maintain the unity of your spirit. There is one body and one spirit, one hope, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all and that is you. But each of us have been given grace according to the gift of faith, some to be apostles, others to be prophets, some to spread the word and some to care for others, others to be preachers or healers, all of us to equip one another for the sake of building up the body of Christ. We are that body to learn and to pass on the things that we have been given in Christ. And not merely to assign to Christ every passing fancy, we are to speak the truth always and always with love so that the whole body may be knit together. In all this we often fail and usually falter. Make us each, O oh God, a part of your body so that we may, as a community, be the witness to your presence in the world. We pray the words that Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now hear these words of assurance. No matter where we are, God is there. No matter what we have done, God forgives. No matter our reluctance to turn to God, God welcomes us and accepts us. 
with that assurance live, live in the fullness of life, live each day afresh and let go of the past and live in today in hope and in freedom. Amen. Colette will bring the Bible reading at this time. A reading from the Ephesians. I, Paul, a prisoner in the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you've been called, with all huma humility and gentleness, with patience bearing with one another, making every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit in one bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit just as you were called to the one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. But, e but of us was given grace according to the measure of Christ's gift. The gifts he gave were that some would be apostles, some prophets, <laughs> some evangelists, some pastors and teachers to equip the saints for all their work of ministry of, for building up the body of Christ until all of us come to the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God to maturity to measure the full stature of Christ. Thank you so much. So I think we're ready for the vow time. Preparation, receiving the gift, declaring what we know, that there's one God above all, through all, and in all. Now we are ready for the vows of faith and promise. Here, I'll give this to you, Dean. I gotta ask the parents and the godparents. Oh, the church is, functions as the godparent in the UCFC, but you know, it's hard to always be connected, so godparents play a, a terrific role. You're important. <coughs> yep. Everybody is here is important. So the first question is, do you believe in God, source of love, in Jesus Christ, love incarnate, and in the Holy Spirit, love's power? I, I do, by the grace, grace of God. God. Will you fall in the way of Christ Jesus, resisting oppression and evil, resisting oppression and evil, seeking justice and witnessing to God's love for all creation? I will, God, be my helper. Will you turn to Christ Jesus and accept him as Lord and Savior, beloved of God and brother to us all? I will, will God, God, be my helper. Will you join with the Fellowship of Trinity United Church to celebrate God's presence to live with respect in creation and to love and serve others. I will, God, be my helper. Now, especially for Colette and Valerie. In baptism, young Stanley Michael marks an important step in his journey of faith. Will you care for him and help him to take his place within the mission and witness of Christ Church? I will, God, be my helper. And now I ask Alan and Beverly to respond to this question. Let us pledge to these persons our support and care, and we'll say together. Yes. As a baptized and baptizing people, we commit ourselves to support and uphold you within the community of faith. May God grant us all the grace to live out our baptism. Amen. Ophelia, I need your help, please. Yes. Thank you. Now, can you take the handle here? Two hands, please. A lot of water there. And let's pour it into the bowl. You're doing a great job, dear. Thank you. I'll have you do another job in a little while. We've got to pray. Gracious and holy God, we bless you for the gift of life and within it the gift of water. Over its unshaped promise, your spirit hovered at creation. 
By water comes the growth of the earth. And what a blessing to receive water in these days. And the rain. Through water you led the children of Israel to freedom. In the waters of the Jordan, your beloved one and our brother was baptized. Now may your spirit be upon us and what we do, that this water may be a sign for all of new life in Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Amen. Stanley, do you know your brother's name? Do you know his middle name? Michael. Thank you, Jesse. He can hold him up. Yeah. Stanley Michael. Hello, young man. <laughs> Stanley Michael, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Stanley Michael Hardiman. Hardiman, I believe. I declare you to be a member of the Christian Church. May the Lord bless you and by confirmation, a member of the United Church of Canada. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May Christ smile upon you and be gracious to you. May he unveil his face to you and bring you his peace. What a wonderful okay. smile. <laughs> Granddad, you're missing the smile here. Turn him around so you can see. Oh, that's a wonderful smile. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Six is eggs. Six is eggs of the Bible. Just look at Jacob. Oh, yes. You could have six and six. Alan, would you bring the prayer? Certainly. Let us pray. Oh, God. Our heavenly parent, father, mother of us all, grant that Stanley Michael Hardiman, as he grows in years, may also grow in grace and in the knowledge of Jesus Christ, your beloved one and our brother. And by the renewing and reforming influence of the Holy Spirit, may he ever be a true child of yours, serving you faithfully all his days. And dear God, guide and uphold the parents of Stanley and Ophelia, and shall indeed and the godparents, Valerie and Colette, and your church congregation, Trinity United, that by loving care, wise counsel, and holy example, all may lead those entrusted into their care into everlasting joy and peace. And may that unconditional love pattern all we do with Jesus beside us, surrounding us, and in us as we go into the world so that it is a better, kinder, more loving place. Yeah. This we pray through the person of Jesus Christ, who teaches us to pray. Amen. Amen. Our lectionary reading today is the same scripture that Reverend Ross used at Stanley's baptism. I will read today's reading from The Voice. This translation is a little different, so as you've heard it read twice, I invite you to listen for God's word for you this day. Ephesians 4. As a prisoner of the Lord, I urge you, live a life worthy of the calling he has graciously extended to you. Be humble, be gentle, be patient, tolerate one another in an atmosphere thick with love. Make every effort to preserve the unity of the spirit that has already created with peace binding you together. There is one body and one spirit. Just as you have been called to pursue one hope, there is one Lord, one living faith, one baptism, and one God. The Father over all, who is above all, through all, and in all. This God has given to each of us grace in full measure, according to Jesus' gifts. As the Spirit says, when he ascended to the heights, he put captivity in chains 
and his triumph, he gave gifts to the people. Well, when it says he ascended, then it means that he had descended earlier to lower levels, that is, to the earth. The one who descended is the one who rose from the dead and ascended far above the heavens so that he could fulfill all things. It is the risen one who handed down to us a variety of gifts. So some of us would be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers, so that God's people would thoroughly be equipped to build up the body of Christ until all of us come to the unity of faith and be filled with the knowledge of the Son of God until we stand mature in his teachings and fully formed in the likeness of the anointed or the liberating friend. Then we will no longer be like children tossed around here and there upon the ocean waves, picked up by every gust of doctrine. Instead, by truth spoken in love, we are to grow in every way into him, the anointed one, the Christ, the head. He joins and holds together the whole and holy body in which its ligaments providing the support needed to each part so it works properly in design for the healthy and growing and mature body that builds itself in love. The word of God. Thanks be to God. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to God, who is our, our rock and our strength.
our foundation, and our hope. Amen. Today I would like to share with you a story. It's um, called The Carpenter's Tools. It's a story that has been passed down through generations within churches. And um, so I'd like to share with you today. And I just want you to imagine. Imagine with me as we hear this story. The Carpenter's Tools had a conference. Brother Hammer was the chairman. Upon bringing the meeting in order, he said he had heard that there had been some complaints among the fellow tools, and he thought it would be a good idea to discuss it openly and frankly together. So let's hear your complaints, brothers and sister tools. Yes, Brother Saw, what is your complaint? So Brother Saw stood up and said, it's that little sister pencil. She gets on everybody's nerves. She's so small, she can hardly be found when she is needed. And when she's found for service, she is always so blunt and makes a bad impression. She certainly needs to be sharpened up a bit if she expects to be any use at all. Then little sister pencil slowly rose to her feet and spoke. All right, I might be blunt at times, but it's when I spend too long in service when I'm like that. At least I'm not like Big Sister Drill and her family of bits. It seems to me that they are always going around in circles. Really, to me, Sister Drill is a bit boring. So Sister Drill and her family of all the bits stood together, and she replies, Yes, I know I have a reputation of going around in circles, but at least my family is not like Brother Plain. You have to push him to get him to do anything, and then all the work is on the service, surface. There is no depth to his work like that of ours. Well, all of the tools agreed with Sister Drill. Sister Drill had got a good point about Brother Plain. All their eyes turned to Brother Plain to see what he would say. Well, brothers and sisters, spoke Brother Plain, I guess I'm not the only one around here that has to be pushed to do anything or has no depth in service. Brother Sam Paper is worse than I am, you know. He's new in our midst, and look how rough he is. I can't stand to stand beside him. He just rubs me the wrong way. How can he accomplish anything in this service? I'll never know. He is so irritating. Well, jumped up, Brother Sam Paper, and he was really mad. Brother Plain is just jealous, he shouted. He knows I have better success in service than he does. Raising his voice even louder, he yelled, while everyone is complaining, how about Brother Rule? He makes me boil by always measuring others by his standards, as though Brother Rule is the only one who gets it right around here. Well, all the teams tools seemed to have complaints against one another. Some suggested that a committee to be formed to hear all of the complaints and try to settle them. Brother Level was suggested, but he was turned down because he was so exacting. And Sister Square had turned down, was turned down because she was just too old-fashioned. Brother Chisel could be so cutting, and everyone was afraid of Brother Punch. In the midst of this heated discussion, while some were about to walk out thinking they were not needed, who should walk in but their master, the carpenter of Nazareth? The carpenter's father asked him to build a house in which they could dwell. And now he was almost finished with it. The carpenter put on his work clothes and resumed the work 
that the father had given him to do. And the carpenter used the saw, the hammer, the pencil, the drill, the plane. He also used the sandpaper, the ruler and the level, the punch, and all the other tools. But now someone else appeared on the scene. It was the carpenter's father. How pleased and thrilled he was to see what his son had accomplished. How did you do it, my son? asked the father. Well, said the son, I put to use all the tools I have and how I love every one of them. I paid a high price for them, father, but they are really worth it. See, Brother Hammer there, he is so useful for the work of both tearing down and building up. He is so effective in service because he really hits the nail on the head. He's a very solid worker, I must say. And Brother Saw, he's a really good worker. He's really sharp and he puts his teeth into the work constantly going back and forth in one area at a time for very effective service. And I'm sure glad to have Sister Pencil too, although she is not very big and I have to sharpen her up and a little from time to time. She's very useful in correcting and marking work. And Father, there is another one that I just couldn't do without. Sister Drill and all of her little bits in her family. They are so good about reaching down deep into the heart and they're always leaving a way for a follow-up. And there is Brother Plain. He's so handy to have around in the service. He's very smooth worker and never bites off more than he can chew at one time. He's so good at overcoming obstacles as well. And how did you find this tool, my son? asked the father. You mean Brother Level? questions the son. He's great. He had a good eye for balance and so level-headed. I can use him often for he does a good job for me. I am so thankful, said the carpenter, for every one of these tools I have. They are essential to my work. Take little brother Punch, for example. Although he's quite small, with the assistance of brother Hammer, he does a fine job of driving the point home. And there is tiny brother Rule. Although he is small in size, he always extending himself to make various circumstances and it, he is accurate in his service. Even my new tools like Brother Sandpaper, I don't know how I'd get along without him. Although there is a certain roughness about him, he does well in producing smooth results through his service. So you see, Father, said the carpenter, it is because of having a variety of good tools that I am able to build this house. I'm so thankful that I have all of these tools so with their help, I can finish your house. Let me show you around the rest of the building, Father. Well, upon their leaving, all the carpenter tools started rejoicing because the carpenter commendation and saying how pleased he was to the Father made them feel so accomplished together. Brother Hammer rose again and said, Brothers and sisters, I perceive that all of us are needed. Although all of us may have our faults or may not do things the same ways that we think we should, whether old or new, young or old, large or small, all of us laborers together is pleasing to our master and his father. Okay, in case it's not obvious, the unknown author of this little story was talking about church. So whether we're hard-headed hammers or boring drills, blunt pencils or irritating sandpaper, 
Maybe you just work on the surface like the plane or keep things level or take the measurements of everything and find things wanting or drive every point home. Well, all of us are in that story somewhere. There are two truths about the church. First, a Christian church is only a church by the grace of God known in Jesus Christ. And it's through that grace that we are gifted and find life in all of its fullness. And the second is, if there's something to do around the church, somebody's got to do it. And we need the whole toolbox to get the job done. Yes, you are the body of Christ. Each of you is part of the body. Each of you is needed in the body. Every voice, every skill, every talent, every tool. It takes all of us working together to be the body of Christ. And in the hands of Christ, let us offer all that we are to work together to build a community of love and care and compassion. Let us pray. We give thanks for our faith community, O oh God, for all of us who come in different shapes and sizes, introverts and extroverts with a variety of cultural roots and different styles of leadership and many talents. Help us to lead a life worthy of your calling, O oh God. Enable us to live and work with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, speaking truth with love, and making every effort to maintain a bond of peace. Spirit of God, you have called our community of diversity together. Hold us in unity, we pray. Hold us in unity of faith. Enable us to use all the gifts that you have blessed us with to make a difference in our community, in our families, in, in the world. God of grace, we offer our prayers for our world. We give thanks for our new Governor General, Mary Simon. We give thanks for the many gifts that she brings to the office, and we ask that you bless her with wisdom, courage, and strength in her leadership. We pray for Prime Minister Justin Trudeau and all the leadership, including Tony Van Bynen. Bless them in their diversity that they may work in unity for this country. We pray for Indigenous siblings as searches continue across the country for unmarked graves. God, hold our siblings near in this tender time and bless them with comfort and courage. Source of love. This is a precarious and tenuous time as we learn to live in new ways with COVID since it is still in our midst. We are so grateful for the miracle of the vaccinations, yet there are concerns for the surge of the Delta variant, and there remains a vaccine in inequality around the world. Help us to find ways to bring care and healing to all who are in need. We still do not know what the long-term effects of the pandemic will have on our collective health or economics or social structures. Remind us that our being and well-being are tethered to one another. May we place our trust in you and may your transformational love unclench our grip on fear. The U.S. gymnasts Simone Biles stepped away from competing in the Olympics to focus on her mental well health. Holy One, we are grateful for those who articulate their need for help, who prioritize their health over others' expectations, 
and who know the freedom that can come from setting boundaries. May we all hear your still small voice that reassures us that we are enough, that we are your beloved for no other reason than our existence and that there is nothing that we can do to earn your love, that you hold us near. O oh, Creator, your creation continues to cry from the destruction caused by climate change. No corner of the world is unaffected. Flooding in South America and Southeast Asia, record-setting heat waves of forest fires in Canada, Australia and the U.S., and devastating cyclones in Africa. Scientists have noted an unpredicted surge of climate-related disasters since 2019. How can this news feel so strange and yet so familiar? Stir our complacent hearts, we pray. Let us not be fatigued by the magnitude of the devastation, for you are a God of small beginnings. Guide us toward a better understanding of how we might be change agents against the rise of climate change. God of grace, cast a vision of how we might better be stewards of your beloved creation and all that lies within it. God, we thirst for justice and hunger and for your peace. We pray for the day that when we will turn all the weapons into plowshares and we hope for the day when we look to our neighbors with eyes of love and compassion and that the whole world knows peace and justice. We offer this prayer in the name of your Son, and our Christ, Jesus. Amen. Dear friends, let us go into this week knowing that we are enough, we are beloved, and that we all have gifts to share. Let us go now with caring and daring hearts, with the blessing of God, the parent, mother, and father of all, Jesus Christ, our brother, who blesses us with gifts of grace, and the Holy Spirit who moves us into service. Let us now go in peace. Amen. <laughs>